If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. Okay. Um, a neat topic uh, is um, if we forgot uh, to cover, uh, which is there in the document, definitely we will uh, discuss on those things. I remember. And uh, if I forget, please uh, just uh, ask uh, on that topic. We'll definitely cover because we have still uh, one week and we'll make sure that we'll cover that. Okay. So uh, today we are going to discuss on document management. And uh, this is an uh, important uh, topic with respect to PLM as well as you not only PLM uh, module, SAP PLM module, but uh, it is used by um, other modules of SAP also, like uh, wherever they, wherever any documents needs to be managed within SAP. And if you are going to uh, propose uh, to your uh, customer or client that uh, we have something from SAP uh, as a document management solution which we can implement and we can manage uh, all the documents, uh, business related documents or product related documents or any kind of document, then we have a solution from SAP uh, which is called as a document management system. Okay, so document management uh, is used by SAP other module other than SAP PLM like SD module, MM module, a plant maintenance module, or a PP module, or um, uh, HR module. A a any any uh, module, uh, they any in any module when they they wanted to manage the document so uh, they make use of this uh, document management system so which is a, a, a cross uh, application component offered by sap so uh, and here the requirement for uh, document management uh, with respect to plm is uh, mainly on how they, uh, how a recipe developer in the lab, they manage the, uh, the specification relevant document and uh, the, how they manage the, the recipe related document, how they, they make sure that whenever they are uh, going to develop a product, they are in the process of uh, developing a product. What all documents, uh, what all certifications are uh, available for that uh, product during the product development? So that is the main uh, aim or main main objective uh, to use the documents, so that any department, whether uh, regulatory authority department or or a quality department, or uh, or uh, or uh, um, R and D department, they can have a look of the particular document which will which is attached to that particular uh, 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 product. Or uh, so it is a mandatory requirement um, from uh, department from the different departments like regulatory authority department for them it is important to see the regulatory related uh, documents uh, whether the product is compliant or not for that uh, reason they wanted to see the document if that certification is attached or not for that document that certification is nothing but uh, they they wanted to see somewhere in the document and so application, whatever application they are using, um, a business is using, uh, in this case, SAP. So in, in this SAP model, they should able to see that where the document is placed and uh, how the document can be retrieved once a user 
and is trying to access and open the document. And hence, this document management uh, from SAP uh, plays a key role there. So that is the requirement of this document management. We will see uh, in the today's course, uh, uh, today's, you uh, um, can say, the, uh, the, during today's session, we will see that uh, this topic, let me just. Okay. So uh, before starting, this is a standard uh, uh, disclaimer, uh, which is uh, mainly uh, to comply as per Zarante. So this is here, uh, the information, and uh, uh, this is for official use. So, and then if we move here, And I hope you can see my screen. So uh, this is the agenda, today's agenda. Uh, and to complete the document management, uh, all topics, these all are the topics. So we will discuss on how the uh, document info record uh, topic uh, is been covered here. What is the basic data screen of document info record? What all different uh, statuses of uh, document uh, in document management system can be managed? What is the object link of a document? How the uh, documents uh, can be stored? What is the document management system best practices architecture? We will see the architecture. Then how, and then we will see that these all activity, uh, the process flow of managing documents. So mainly these all are the uh, actual activity uh, performed by any user or any application developer. So uh, any relevant document can be uh, accessed via SAP uh, DMS, uh, Model. So when we are implementing SAP PLM, then it is important that if customer is looking for the document management uh, from SAP solution itself, as we discussed that we, can, we are proposing the SAP document management system. And this has got uh, uh, integration uh, between multiple models as we discussed already. So the main activity, how to search a document there are different types of document. What is the criteria of searching a document? Then how to create a new document, how we can create a new document and how different, uh, you know, new versions of uh, document, how, uh, how are the different versions of document we can create and then how uh, we can assign the object link to metadata and then how we can download the attachments. So these all are the activities uh, uh, needs to be performed by any user or application developer if they wanted to uh, work on uh, on uh, on the uh, uh, document management. So uh, uh, next, you can see that this is the area of as we discussed that um, earlier that. These all are the you know different uh, external systems which you can see that this is a mobile device and this is a scan document. Then uh, this is contract and then computer related files. So these all are the sources. Uh, what you can see, uh, which is uh, which is mentioned here as an external, and then you can see here uh, the within SAP. Uh, what are different uh, uh, documents uh, related to the each uh, object elements are relate uh, are uh, 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 are used uh, for for the document? So, like for there can be a material document, 
equipment related document bomb related document and this is the secure storage area where they manage uh, store the this is the area where they keep the document it can be the location where uh, the physical space where the document is getting stored so this can be within sap or outside of sap also so that is depend on the business scenario how we uh, how we uh, uh, set up a document management uh, integration or how how we set up a document management configuration so as in this figure you can see that the the source of the document and different types of document relevant to the each objects so uh, this picture is shown about this then these all are the uh, you know different functions uh, there are version management and there are different versions so uh, you can have a single was one version which is original version and if there is any change in that document version then someone has to copy the existing document or they can create a new document and attach new document and and of course that document number with with a unique version uh, where uh, someone can attach the document are the latest document which is which is uh, uh, which is required for the business so they can use the version management anyone any user or any application developer they can use the version management status management is actually with respect to document management you know, the functions of status management is there are a certain uh, process of uh, a review and approval of the documents so uh, so here in the document the for the different document types so there are our our different documents uh, sap offers a uh, statuses different statuses once some document is getting created then the first initial version of uh, initial status of the document will be set as in process and then for release and then release and then some document needs to be uh, uh, made for not any official use then they will make it as obsolete so this is the stand these all are the standard statuses offered by sap for document management system so there are classification based on different classification so you can classify based on the classification of document you can classify and you can do the setup accordingly and so that you can use the fun this functions and storage area you can have the secure storage area in the architecture slide we will see that so what all uh, how uh, generally we uh, see the you know where where the document is getting stored what all the config related settings are required for storing a document where we should uh, go in which transaction we should go and see that if the storage uh, 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 secure storage um, uh, uh, link are uh, attached to that particular document so so uh, these all are the uh, very theoretical uh, uh, attributes which is mentioned here so there are uh, different uh, interfaces this is basically an interface with external cad systems uh, which is not for process industry but these all are the uh, the the cad drawing related documents which is interface with the with the doc and it is used uh, in document management system the object link is very um, critical thing where uh, we when we create a document and we attach a document then system in turn create a object link and it basically stores the document at certain place and then when you want to download or access if you are authorized then system will allow you to access that document 
so basically this object link is very important and then display and processing of originals uh, there are standard integration uh, uh, with uh, microsoft office integration uh, like uh, uh, not uh, for plm but for ehs module they have sap document management system has got uh, the microsoft office uh, integration or we can say that it is inbuilt uh, uh, inbuilt uh, functionality is available whenever you want to create a, a, a label or report and then uh, microsoft uh, uh, word uh, document uh, is been accessed and the code uh, can be uh, written by using the microsoft word so uh, and but actually when you are uh, writing a code uh, in order to display a value in any of the report or label so uh, sap uh, is using the microsoft office uh, here which is inbuilt in in sap uh, system so and uh, you can um, you can uh, make use of it and uh, the the for for all this functionality there is already um, uh, available uh, microsoft office integration which is inbuilt and where document management system uh, plays a, a major role there but for plm we don't use uh, those kind of uh, uh, microsoft word uh, 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 word uh, template design we don't use uh, to write a code something in order to display a fields value so we don't do uh, uh, from uh, plm but yes there is an integration um, if at all as per business requirement if someone wants to create a report by using microsoft uh, windows word integration template they can create a uh, uh, create a template write a code there which is a standard sap uh, uh, functionality they can write a code for uh, certain fields and they can populate the value in from the plm itself they wanted to see the reports so there is a direct object link uh, from wwi template to uh, to the plm to the plm system so but it is generally uh, uh, not advisable nowadays because uh, based on the requirement it gets changes but yes whenever there is a requirement of a business when they wanted to work along with the, the regulatory authority department and regulatory authority they uh, manage with lot of uh, uh, reports which is for raw material reports or finished product reports and they wanted to uh, see the, those kind of document also then there is a requirement comes up there so uh, that is a uh, different part i mean that is one of the feature of, of uh, uh, microsoft integration which is available in the sap and uh, the last one is a uh, document center which is a latest offering from sap s4 uh, whenever a uh, customer is looking for uh, a document managed in the cloud platform. So in order to meet the uh, business requirement, in order to uh, access all sorts of document by us, all sorts of user, not only SAP user, but non SAP user also if they have a requirement if they wanted to access and create a folder and check in check out of all those documents then sap has uh, brought one uh, cloud based solution called document center so uh, a document center in order to set up the document center uh, in cloud uh, whole configuration setup of a server everything needs to be done separately and what 
so so that is why you can see that the sap document center on cloud platform so it is basically cloud solution offered by sap it can integrate with existing sap document uh, management system where they can have the link of different documents from sap as well as uh, it, it can be uh, integrated with any non sap system wherever documents they want to integrate so uh, these all are these are key definitions of document management uh, some uh, key elements so you can see that there are content server knowledge flow and document info record and uh, you can see that these all are few questions and uh, what is content server what is the purpose of content server so anyone of you have heard about content server uh, any uh, business scenario or anyone you have come across that you need to uh, manage your document somewhere and some some users they want to access the, the documents from a specific location might be not uh, content server but some other uh, server where where you are managing the document and the business has the requirement that they want to access this document okay let me tell you this content server is offered as free of cost from sap if someone has got the license of SAP and they want to use this SAP document management, then SAP, uh, the, this content server uh, will be offered as free of cost from SAP. There is no license required. And what is content server is nothing but you uh, uh, specify the, the location uh, or you can say uh, the, this is the, the place where you keep all the document, okay? And from here, you link your document uh, to the different objects element. Like if you want to uh, access the material relevant document, then you can set up a link in such a way that your document will be stored at content server. And whenever you try to retrieve the document by entering some transaction code, then you can access that document as for that one, you should do some config settings in order to link the document from content server. So, so basically, it is a storage type of files which is attached to document info records. Okay, so in uh, you can see here, this is the setup. What you can see is standard uh, uh, best practice architecture. This is a content server where uh, the actual document is. Um, uh, link to the uh, certain uh, object element and some user wanted to uh, retrieve the documents, then this is the flow. And actually, um, this content server is actually getting stored the uh, data in MaxDB server, SAP MaxDB server. So this is a standard architecture of uh, document flow and this is how document is getting you know linked to the content server okay so uh, you can uh, see that the, this is the uh, you know, main importance of uh, content server the second thing is knowledge pro so knowledge pro is um, uh, like wherever uh, the requirement from business that they wanted to uh, have the access of all the documents not only for the SAP users, but they wanted to uh, get the access to those document which is stored, but they wanted to have the certain set of user who are not using SAP. So they are not using SAP at all, but they are non SAP users and they wanted to access the document. Then in that case, Knowledge Pro uh, uh, will be used from SAP. So this is one of the key, key element in SAP. Also, when you create a, a document, 
we will see next uh, uh, next step we will see we will go that how we can create the document then you will get an idea but just i will cover up uh, 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 very fast here then uh, we you will understand that what i am talking about k pro is nothing but whenever you want to attach more than one document in within a document number then k pro k uh, uh, plays a role there so you can do the setup accordingly in order to attach more than one documents like one pdf document and one drawing document one some other document all multiple documents then you can do the setup of k pro okay that's why you can see that here flexibility of storing document in one is to n ratio so where you will still have one document info record link but you can store n number of document there so that's why uh, k pro uh, we use uh, from sap document uh, management okay so let me go to the system before going to system i would like to uh yes like to show you customizing of dms yeah so uh, you can i hope you can see my screen these all the different document types which is used uh, in document management okay so this uh, i think this uh, custom uh, end of each day session normally i upload all this customizing document so uh, don't worry this document customizing document for dms i will also upload to the lms portal right now it is not there because as per the process uh, whatever days uh, session i take the config uh, config or customizing document i will upload there so you can access uh, it after uh, after this session once i will ask uh, zarantech uh, team to upload this okay so uh, you can access uh, this document in spro and uh, you can also uh, access uh, from the transaction dc10 these all are the different document types and uh, me go to so you can see here uh, these all are the different config rationale you can see here uh, these all details are there so let's go uh, to the system and we will see system is slow okay yeah you can see that uh, you can also add the document relevant uh, role and uh, once you add the document relevant role uh, within the uh, your uh, sap user profile then you will able to see this query time manage document okay so um, and 
let me show you where is the okay so uh, here you can see that uh, you can search the document there is also a uh, uh, fury tile find document but you can also do from the manage document fury tile okay so if you want to search a document so what i was referring here uh, different document types so where you can see this document types so you can see here there are different document types which you can see uh, either you can go from the fury tile direct manage document or you can go via transaction dc tile so where you can see the different document types so these all are the standard document type uh, and basically this is report document type and which is very useful for ehs but overall all the document if you want to see then this is all the document types available and based on your use you can do the setup for this document in such a way that based on the usability you can select the document type and you can create a document okay so when you are creating a document system will ask you what type of document you want to consider for creating a document and then you can attach that document to that uh, particular uh, document okay so as you can see that this is all uh, documents are available and if i want to search some document based on the uh, like uh, document type i can select this and i have selected here document type rms and i can see that system has searched one document which is available here which is nothing but recipe document so you can open this document okay so this is a first step when you want to search a document so how to search a document so based on the different input criteria provided you can select one document type and then you can search a document second step i would like to go next once i wanted to show you the configuration okay so we go here SPRO and uh, obviously you will have the cross application component if I remember yeah and uh, you see here document management and you will have the general data and here you have all these settings Okay. So here you can see that define DMS document types. Okay. So uh, here you can see that uh, different document types are available. So what is all this? What is the significance of all these uh, fields? So basically, if you want to select some document you can select those document suppose in this case engineering or design drawing document type and you can um, uh, configure in such a way that whether the change document is allowed or not whether the uh, archiving authorization is allowed or not whether the version assignment is allowed or not so there are different types of settings which can be control uh, at document type uh, level only so you, if you can go and see 
this particular uh, document type configuration you can see that here this is this is the standard document type offered by sap so in any of the system any project you are working then you can see here the document uh, this standard document type with the same kind of setting but if you based on your requirement you can uh, set up the configuration accordingly whether you want to have uh, the internal number range or external number range you want to change the number uh, when you are creating a document then you can do the setup here so the, this is document type relevant configuration this number range uh, from where it is coming 02 or 01 yesterday we were uh, seeing that so here you can see that the number range for documents which is coming from here so if you want to have a different number range uh, you can have the number range uh, setting here and you can define a certain document number as per your business requirement if business says that my document uh, all recipe related document number should start from 5000 then you can uh, set up you can do the configuration for number range here in such a way that uh, the you can uh, create one number range uh, maybe 05 and then you can uh, set up a number starting from 5000 to 5999 and then you assign that interval to uh, this particular document type here whatever document type we were seeing so they says that uh, for recipe related document i wanted to uh, have the number uh, start uh, from 5 so that all the users will able to understand once they see that document yes this document is for recipe and so that is how in order to difference differentiate between different types of document they do this uh, you can do this uh, setting in this way so i was there for this let us go to okay so uh, we were here let me go to uh recipe related document yeah so this here if you want to change the number range you can come here and change but before uh, coming here you need to set up the number in there here a user is star so it will be uh, accessible for all the sorts of user so here you can see that change document and use kpro this is all the standard setting and uh, uh, you can use as it is but whenever there is a change of uh, the requirement you can do that setup there are uh, different config settings for different language so if you select a particular document type you can come here and you will see that uh, language specific requirements are there and you can see here this recipe relevant document they have a statuses so this recipe related document if you are creating a recipe uh, document uh, i mean when you are creating a document and attaching the any recipe related document then document status are designed here as per sap standard in work and released so uh, here you can see that the uh, there is an object link where a document is attached here so these all are the documents are attached these documents are attached so this is actually <coughs> standard document which is attached here but when you are creating a document uh, then that particular document status is 
will be considered from SAP uh, in work and released. Okay. So uh, there is something called object link, defined object link. These all are the different statuses for a recipe. You can see here RMS. These all the screen uh, number, which is defined as per standard in SAP. This is for specification, which is for ESTRH uh, table for a specification. And uh, there are some other equipment requirement relevant uh, documents are also available. So if we go back to our uh, configuration documents, you can see that internal and external number range we have seen. We have seen that uh, document types and now we will go to define workstation application. So uh, when we go to workstation application, so here uh, is you can see that define workstation application. So what is workstation application? What is the meaning of this? And this is very important. So workstation application is nothing but the specific format of the file or a specific uh, file format of that particular, uh, you know, uh, application you wanted to link for that workstation application, then then you can use this workstation application. Suppose you have a graphic file and uh, which you can see that what type of format it can it can be accepted for this graphic file. And then uh, you can choose and even if you want to add some more file format you can define here file format. And then uh, these all uh, standard configurations are there. So you can see here, this is all the standard uh, format for TIF application, which is uh, mentioned here. And you can see here, if we consider some more uh, document like, uh, Okay, if we consider this MS project, this file format will be applicable. And if you take uh, this example, which is for uh, EHS, you can see that doc format is there and they use this always file format dot doc. So if you want to add up some more file format, you can add here. But in SAP, as per a standard of SAP, they offer the, uh, the, the very limited file format only whenever you are going to use this kind of application. So uh, this all the configuration. So what is the definition of workstation application? So this is specify workstation application that the system will use in order to process and display the application file. Means whenever you want to uh, display the document and if that document is attached, when you are creating a document by using a particular document type, then whether that particular format is allowed to open or not, whether this will allowed uh, or not. So that is why uh, uh, we use workstation application and it is linked with the document. Okay, so here you can see that uh, the same configuration node, it is available here, what we have discussed just now. You can see that uh, uh, number range and the significance of each table. You can uh, follow this if you want to change the new interval range, you can create a new interval uh, uh, range and you can have your own document uh, number starting as per business requirement. If they are asking that um, start the number uh, starting from five or nine or one or zero, so you can do the setup accordingly. And these all are the standard uh, uh, you know, field uh, 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 explanation where you can see that all this 
uh, explanation is available here. So you can see here define object links. So this is important when you are there in the doc defined document type. So you can see that define object link is specify actually the object uh, which is a database table of the master record. This object will be linked to directory. So DIR is nothing but your directory where the object is linked. Uh, you can specify the object which is uh, you know uh, object will be linked to that your directory. So uh, this is create document indicator as you can see here create document it is shown here where you can see the uh, set it indicating the procedure to generate a document when the user is working with the linked object. So there are three options. You cannot create a document and create simple document and use a, uh, tr a transaction to create a document. So uh, these all are the standard explanation and there are different document statuses which we have seen that by using the statuses you can see that how uh, the status uh, of the document is there. So if we go there I wanted to show you. Uh, how you can access from a transaction code also uh, CV01N. So this is a transaction code to create a document from GUI. And if you go to uh, uh, if you go to uh, Fury portal, you can create a document by accessing the Fury app manage document. And you can go and click on create here. And then you see here a pop up screen will open and where you can uh, select the document type which is mandatory. OK, so without document type, you cannot create a document here. So system will ask you what sorts of document type you want to uh, opt for creating a document number. OK, so if I will opt for recipe related document, then I will go there and choose the document type relevant for recipe. So that document type report now recipe document. And then I enter here and then uh, document description test document for DMS. Now, this is uh, considered as a default language English here with description and I I have, I have not yet attached any document here now. Still, I have not attached any document. I will show you next how to attach the document. So you can go like this, these sections. You can go to object link. You can go to document uh, description. You can go to classification. And you can go to attach the document here. And once I go here, I enter the document type and description and I try to create system should create a document with a number and this number will be uh, generated for the document which I have created here in SAP system based on the number range configuration. So for this document type number range is already assigned in the configuration of document type which you have seen. Just now, like uh, yeah, so now you can see that this document number is created, and what is the document status here? document status is in work. So 
I was talking about here the document statuses. So these all are the document statuses. And we have seen when we were discussing about the example of recipe status, recipe related document statuses, it was in work and released. There was only two uh, statuses of the document. So here you can see that in work is the document status. When you created a document and we know that we have entered just a document type. You can see here document type it was selected as RMS when we wanted to create a document. And then system has generated the document number based on the config setting of a, a document wherever uh, here. Here you can see the defined the DMS document types and which you have seen that what was that RMS. You can go to position RMS and you can see here this document number. So system has considered the document number based on the internal number range assignment here 02. So 02 is an internal interval actually. So you this number is defined under the 02. So where you will see this 02 you will see within the number range here. Number range you will see that 02 starts from 1. 1000. Okay. So so you can see that this 116 is just now it is created. This is the first document. So 116 is just created. So that is how you can correlate the configuration, how it is happening. So I have just now created a document. And next step is how to release this document. OK, so to release the document currently this document is in work okay so this document you go to edit mode and then you can see that this document next status is visible from in work to release can anyone say that uh, can anyone answer that where this uh, statuses are coming for this document the type itself sorry so there is a uh, document type, right? Correct. So from this configuration, it is coming here as we have seen that. Uh, so you can see the document statuses. So from here it is coming. OK, so for this document type RMS, they have uh, we have defined in configuration. This document can be in, in work and release status. Only two statuses are there. That's why you can see that first when we created a document, you can see its system is automatically proposed the first status of this document, which is in work and then Next status, when we wanted to release this document, system is displaying the next statuses. Okay. Next status as per configuration is released. That's why it is coming from here. Okay. So when we want to release this document, we select and then we save. Okay, so now this document is released. So now this you cannot perform any changes within this document. Okay, if you want to perform the change, then you, you should have uh, revert the status from release to in, in, in work. But that is uh, when you are working in real lifetime environment, then you will uh, you should have the certain authorization where you can revert the status from release to in process or not. If you have whether it is allowed or not, then only you can revert that status. Similarly, in recipe also, we will see in recipe the uh, different statuses are there. 
Uh, similarly, we have seen in specification in process uh, for release and release statuses. So the configuration everywhere uh, for the statuses are standard offered by SAP. Okay. So as you can see that if we want to search a document, just now we have created this document and you can see this recipe document we have created, which is in release status. There are different statuses also as per document type, which is different. And this is coming from your uh, customizing, uh, uh, customizing setting. So for this uh, document type TRO, uh, which is treasury uh, message, so the, the statuses are sent. So, so it differs and it differs from uh, document to document, document types, what they are using and based on that one uh, statuses will be visible. Okay. So next we go to the configuration document. The, so this is how uh, they have shown here. This is the configuration node for workstation application. And we have seen that different types of, uh, you know, workstation applications are there, which is used for the file format and file format can be opted based on the, the workstation application type. Okay. So uh, this is what has been given. Next, next activity, what we will do, we will uh, go and create a, uh, where is that? Where is that PPT? Okay, yeah, no, sorry. Okay, so where is that PPT one? Where is the PPT? Okay. Yeah, so this was the um, available, um, uh, you know, statuses. This was the one of the example of statuses which we have seen. And uh, now we will see that how to attach a document. Okay, so we'll see that how to attach a document and uh, how we can use, uh, how we can see this document is attached. So let me go to system. Where is that system? Yeah. So uh, we go to create a document. And we create a document, we can search like this RMS. And we wanted to create a document. And uh, So once we click on create, then uh, this document number is generated. And then we go to this section originals. We should edit this. And there are two options. Either you can add a link or you can directly upload. Suppose I want to upload this document then the configuration for 
allowed format of the document should be at this document type level if it is allowed then only i will able to upload this type of this file format type of the document to this document number so let's see whether it is allowed or not great so this type of file format is allowed for this document type which what is the document type we have used we have used rms rms document type is for the uh, the for the uh, recipe documents so we can attach this uh, document to this uh, document uh, number okay and then we can save this uh, uh, document now this document attachment is saved so as soon as you save this this will create a directory link to the document whatever location is there okay i'll try to go to spro and we will try to see that what is the uh, you know how it looks like uh, the document and all okay so you can see here the currently there under document versions there are no versions exist so obviously we are creating this uh, document uh, uh, the, this document number we have created with initial version 00 so that's what i was mentioning in our very second third slide we were discussing about versioning of the document so same version say uh, same document with different version can be created when you want to uh, uh, when you are, you want to create a, a new document with, uh, with the same uh, so the next version will be coming into picture so now it is uh, in work we can release this uh, uh, document we have now release uh, we have set the status of this document as a release and the warning what we were getting that once you done this release you cannot make any changes or something that's what it was showing so you can uh, you have seen that how or document attachment can be done and how you can see this attachment uh, we have done of a document which is allowed for this document type okay and uh, current version of this document is 00 and uh, we can uh, copy this document and make the new version also and we do the changes whatever it is required okay how there is uh, okay i don't want to go here so this is uh, actually nwbc uh, screen where you can uh, actually access the documents here also and uh, you can you can perform the same kind of activity from here also the same thing i was showing you uh, from the back end here you can go to transaction code cv01 and okay so this screen exactly the similar of this screen so there is another this is nwbc screen actually the netweaver workbench here if you want to okay uh if you there is an option to create a new version you can do like this also you have to uh, give the document type and uh, you can create a new version of this document 
So now you can see I had created a document from theory portal itself by looking at manage documents where I have created just now a document with number 117 and attach this document. So the second activity I am showing you how to copy an existing document and how to create a new version of the document. So that's why uh, in order to uh, show you uh, in a better way, uh, you can create a document, you can change document, you can display document by, by using the transaction code if you are in GUI system, GUI screen also. So that is nothing but CV01 and CV0, uh, CV02N, CV03N. So these all are the create change display of the document. So now currently I am trying to copy a document and with with the new version. Okay, you can see here the version is 01 and what earlier I had created at that was version 00. Okay, and then obviously when I'm creating a document with new version, it is in work exact right now the status of the document. Okay. So in work, once you we save this document, then the next status will be displayed. So here you can see that currently the status of this document is locked. So here is your secure storage area. So what we were seeing here in the uh, earlier slides, I just wanted to uh, show you what we are. You can say here secure storage area. You are seeing this here. So you can see here, this is a, your secure storage area where the documents for the particular object is stored. Okay. And here actually this document is stored and it is appearing here. So this activity, what we are doing, we are trying to create a new document with new version and then we save this. Okay. Now you can see that 117 with 01 document version is created. Okay. So I have created a document by using the transaction code CV01 and but for, for with new version. So the, the versioning of document is uh, this functionality what we have gone through. Now I wanted to search this document by going at uh, uh, Fury app, I can do that. I can go here. I can uh, go with the document number and I enter here. It will show both of the version. So you can see the first I had created, I ha we have done the example from Fury app only. We have created a document where with the initial version 00, second example I have shown you, I have created a, a document uh, by copying the same document but with the next version. So this has been created with the new version and uh, I have not yet uh, uh, released that document. Okay. So you can release this document even from backend transaction by going 0 to 1, CV 0 to 1, and uh, the same version we wanted to release. We go here and then we release this. Now, this uh, release uh, status is appearing here. We can click on release and then this will get released. How to access this document? What is the format of this document? Format, this is here actually workstation application, which is your doc. And here you can see this DMS storage category. So this is the DMS storage category, which you can see here. See here, how to open this document. See. This is how this document is open. So this document I have attached to that particular application and how it is open. Okay, you can see here 
the whenever you access this document system will open in the temporary storage okay this if you want to open this document as a original then you can click here and it will take you to the place where it is uh, actually uh, uh, stored okay so uh, even you can check in originals here you can see what is the document storage category is been used so for this one we have one configuration where we can define that whenever we are going to attach the document what type of storage category we can define okay we will see uh, we will go to spro and we will see that where is this uh, document uh, storage category we define let me go to spro yes Okay, what was the transition code shortcut? Uh, okay. I don't remember, but uh, let's find like this. yes here okay so we see here this is the transaction code i forgot oscd okay yeah okay so here you can see that uh, the ms storage category is there standard category Yeah, you can see here this con this is the standard configuration which is used for the uh, uh, content repository. And if you'll go here, only authorized person can use to change this. So basically, this is a content repository where uh, the all documents will get stored. This is a standard configuration available or offered by SAP DMS. So this is currently content table and uh, this is uh, stored, getting stored in storage type SAP system database if you have a requirement for external content server then or if you have a requirement to pull or to connect with the 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 cloud related uh, uh, document then there is an option cmis content server for where uh, 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 you it can be used http content server can be used for external system and uh, currently uh, the content server what it is used by default sap system database where SAP, within sap only it is getting stored that uh, data so so these all are the different storage type which you can select and based on the use you can copy this uh, DMS storage uh, category, which you can see here. Uh, this storage category you can copy by going this transaction code, uh, OACT transaction code, 
and then you can define your own storage type and you can link to the particular uh, uh, HTTPS uh, server or, or, or the particular uh, settings, whatever you want to do. Okay. So this is a, a, a configuration very, very important when you want to see what type of document you want to store in particular storage category. So that is why I wanted to show you this is very important. This app uh, with this workstation application is getting stored under content repository DMS underscore C1. Okay. So there are different options. There are different content repository, which is also available. But please remember uh, the standard uh, 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 storage database storage uh, is used as a content repository is DMS underscore C1. Under, under this one only, you can see this storage is there. OK. The second one is uh, sometimes they use this, uh, but you it will not allow me to come out now because uh, this is for different purpose for structure format. So please remember here is the content repository where it stores the uh, the your document for a particular application. So this is a document area DMS based on the usability. For different models, they have their different document area. CRM has got different area and uh, BW has a different area. So they have different, different areas. OK, that's why you if you want to note it down, you can note it down. This is the OACT transaction code where we define the content repository and we uh, we select the storage category. So you can see that this configuration is very important. Uh, and we have to make sure that when we are working for any project, we have to make sure that this is correctly configured in the system. This particular category is assigned to a particular uh, link to a particular content repository. You can copy also. You can make your own uh, category and you can uh, uh, link to the uh, you know content repository. You can do the setup. Okay. So can you repeat the T code, sir? Can you repeat the T code? OACT. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah. So uh, this is important. And uh, then we want to define the storage system. You can define here. And uh, please take help of your uh, basis uh, consultant whenever you are facing any difficulty suppose if you, the document is uh, document content is very huge for any client so obviously within sap storage database system i mean the local sap database uh, uh, storage system they cannot handle that much of document they cannot handle the, they cannot manage that much huge volume of the document. In that case, they will go for the external content server. They will set up a server outside of SAP because the content or volume of the document will be so huge, it cannot sustain the size whenever some action is being performed by any user within SAP application. So when you open a document, it takes hell of time and it get crashed. So you cannot open the document and uh, the performance will get impacted. So in that case, here they use this, not this setup. This is SAP content server setup. So in that case, you will have to propose for external content server so that your all huge volume of document can be managed externally, but you need to link to your here content uh, repository. You have to link here. You have to define 
the storage within the storage category here okay so you have to go and tell your basis uh, consultant basis uh, basis colleague you have to tell him in such a way that he has to define the storage type not as a sap system database it should be http content server and in you have to do the setup here and he has to provide you the the link how this external system of document repository which is nothing but your external content server will link to this storage category so that when you try to attach this document this document will by default instead of the uh, storage category by default this will have a internal content repository as a external system not within sap okay so this is a important setting and um, we have also struggled a lot when we are not able to open the document which is attached here when we are not able to locate the document it doesn't open so when we are oh, able, not able to open the diagram here which diagram is huge and it takes so much of time it get crashed and then please come here and check this is very important configuration and you need to come here and make sure that all the settings are correct within this storage category okay and rest of the thing you will come to know once you will work in the real time project you will have lot of issues lot of uh, things you will and you will learn but you it is very important that we should understand what all the configurations are available where all it is available okay so now the new version of this document i have released okay so this was one of the activity okay so now i wanted to show you uh, we have seen that how to search a document we have seen that how to create a new document we have seen that how to create a new versions of the document we have seen that how uh, we can link the uh, no, metadata how yes metadata okay fine we will go to the same transaction code what is the transaction code cv0 one and if we want to create if we want to access those document from uh, from uh, uh, fury we can go like this in manage documents and then we can uh, uh, we can access the document okay now i wanted to show you see what it is giving status does not allow you to change certain data okay so uh, i will create a new document so here is the object link so this object link i was trying to uh, tell you okay sorry yeah here actually you can link the object different types of objects so based on the material you can enter the material here suppose what is our material just a moment let me search okay we can search a doc uh, material suppose this is the material we can link this material to this document so this is called a document 
दिस इज कॉल्ड ऑब्जेक्ट लिंक टू द डॉक्यूमेंट ओके सो सिमिलरली यू हैव इक्विपमेंट मास्टर आल्सो यू कैन लिंक योर इक्विपमेंट टू दिस डॉक्यूमेंट ओके सो दिस काइंड ऑफ सेटअप वी कैन डू and this is how this object link is there it means you can have different object element included when you are working on some document so this you can say that we have created this test document and you have same so this document has got one link of object which is material object so that's how you see that object link uh, comes into picture okay uh, so, sir prithra yeah. sorry yeah sorry, sorry. Yeah. 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 yeah so what is the exact like from the real business scenario what is the exact purpose of linking a material or an equipment uh, to a document yeah so good question so whenever uh, for example whenever uh, in a plant there is a uh, uh, one worker who is uh, uh, who got a request from a plant for maintenance activity so that particular maintenance activity that particular uh, 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 worker he wants to create a, a maintenance order okay so for that maintenance order he wanted to create a request in such a way that in sap that maintenance work order should be linked or or for a particular equipment he need to uh, create a request so uh, in this scenario a particular object can be linked to the document so that whenever there is a document attached to that uh, uh, work order then this document will carry the the description of that document for wh what is the purpose of that particular uh, work order and this is how this is one example second example is material for the material suppose you are create uh, you are finalizing a bomb and there are uh, certain uh, bomb uh, main material which uh, along with the whole structure component all all component of the bomb should also have uh, the link with this document so in that case this particular object of material needs to be assigned within the document so and how to use this whenever you create a document then from the system only uh, it should get linked with that particular object sap object which is a material master object so whenever you want to link a document with that particular object you you can link that particular object name there so like for for this case material so that anybody wants to use this document uh, in order to process uh, 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 activity they should able to see that what kind of object is related to this document okay, okay. yeah okay. thank you yeah so uh, i will also show you the 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 demo uh, uh, in sap even though i have uh, i have covered uh, the areas but still i would like to show you this flow Uh, so that it will be good for you guys so uh, download attachment you can download also whatever document we have attached you can download that document and then the lock key will get opened so i would suggest you you guys after this uh, session you guys go through this create a document attach a document create a new version of document attach a link download the attachments all this activity you do this is a typical uh, managed document diagram okay which you have seen uh, currently what how we have done okay 
so how to search a document and when the document is found then how to maintain the object link which is optional but still we have done we have uh, linked that object and then how to maintain an attachment it is up to you or business how you can uh, attach a document whether you want to attach the document or not once you have attached the document then based on the classification you can have the different data and you can uh, release the document so let me go to the uh, video this is uh, the representation of how to manage document how to create search and display the document which we have already seen and uh, uh, this is for the attachment so uh, what is the attachment how how we can do the attachment now i would like to show you uh, the uh, the activity this is again so this is again the, the representation of the same thing you can click on manage document all these things we have already done but still i wanted to show you this is from sap you can click on the document type you can click on test testing some document and then you can give the part of the document and you can give the version of the document and okay then you can choose the originals then you can upload a document then you go here and click on the document and then your document is attached and you can save this document. So this is the same thing what we have done so far. Okay. And uh, this I wanted to uh, show you uh, from SAP learning hubs, which I have the access. And uh, for your information, everyone, if you have the SAP learning hub access, you can go and access any sorts of process which you wanted to get clarification you can do that okay but i think based on your organization you will have the access not everyone will have the access uh, if you want i can uh, download the pdf and i can send it to you Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. So this will help you. So actually, we don't have access for uh, uh, that configuration document which you are referring, right? Yeah. As I told you that uh, in the end of the uh, this session, I will upload uh, that configuration document and okay. this activity document also. Do you want this PDF document also yes, or sir. create creating document? I will download and. I will send it to you to send it to Akshay and uh, you can ask Akshay. Akshay will share it with you. All okay. this. Okay. Okay. So you can see that uh, metadata and uh, how to link the object. This, this is the same thing we have done for in case of material bomb. Uh, this is case of material bomb when you go to material sorry uh, manage document and you uh, you wanted to have the design document so you can see that this document is there and then you can go to choose edit and you can do the object linking like this. We have done the object linking from uh, backend transaction CV0 to one, but same thing you can do from the, uh, the Fury portal, uh, which you have seen already now. So you can choose this SAP object draw. Draw is for uh, document, okay? So draw is for document. 
you can click on this and uh, and then you have seen that how this object is linked within this document and you can save this and this is how your object link is created within this, this document which is uh, nothing but your uh, 4201 okay so this is how you have completed the object linking we have seen already i mean uh, i just wanted to make sure that you get a uh, revision so i am showing you second time one we have done already uh, secondly i am trying to show you script wise Okay, you can see that this document is uh, so there are multiple documents. Okay. You can see that download original how to download. So this you you can see that we search the document uh, from Fury portal by using manage document uh, Fury app. You click on this and you go to download originals and you will see that this uh, here we can open or save this document so it will be saved if you will uh, you want to open this document uh, then uh, you can open so it will be open like this and it will be saved into your local system okay so we have completed all this uh, we have seen already we have seen the configuration we have seen the important configuration we have seen that how to search create create new version assign the object link and how to download the attachment so far uh, we have we are done for the today's uh, uh, today's session and uh, any question anything you can just let me know if not i would like to ask you uh, have you done any one inheritance uh, activity a specification inheritance activity i hope no you guys didn't have time i know <laughs> uh, okay let me just go to specification okay i uh, create a specification i will uh, continue i'll enter uh the name on test for inheritance and then uh we save here we okay save the data before you perform the activity now see i i came here inheritance relationship so I was trying to tell you in earlier session, whenever any user has to create uh, or maintain a data similar to one existing specification or, or one existing uh, product specification or one existing product. And he wanted to make a similar product with the existing product so how he should do it so in order to do that they should use in sap plm inheritance functionality so in a, so you will come here and see the specification and you see here within this relationship tab there are two sections one is specification inherits from second is in a specification passes on to this gives you 
the information how you can inherit the specification existence uh, existing specification properties and passing on to a a new specification you want which you want to create so if you click on add then you have the option with pop up saying that what you want to perform this what you want to perform with respect to uh, this copying uh, a specification so first you have to give here the source from which specification source you want to copy okay suppose i want to copy a specification existing specification okay uh i mean i can say product marketability and template is uh okay here template uh, should be available okay template is not there so there is something called template which we need to create okay so if that template is not available then you have to create that template okay so okay so first in order to do that first we need to create a inheritance template and then we can call that inheritance template from here and then we use uh, uh, we use this inheritance template to copy the specification so this is how you can do how to create a template uh, let us go there okay so uh i'll save this i'll not do anything i'll go to uh backend okay, this backend okay yes yes see uh, the same thing you can do from back end but uh, in order to create a template uh, you can see here the source specification and i'll i am trying to show you how to create a template first i am using a bad example but my uh, uh, main agenda is to create a template okay so you can see here template you can uh, see here template is there if you want to create a new template how you should do now you can see that uh, a create inheritance template option is available once you go to uh, change or display mode i have before just this screen i have just uh, clicked on uh, change or display button and then for me here is a create inheritance template okay once i have clicked on inheritance create inheritance template i will click on here and and then i have created a new template here and then in order to so now you can select a new template here but still this template has got nothing so how to uh, add a sorry how to uh, specify what kind of properties you want to copy by using inheritance template when 
you want to copy a specification existing specification to the new specification in order to do that uh, you have to go like this and uh, uh, i understand uh, it's very difficult to recognize now how what i am doing but please uh, go through the video go through this recording and perform this activity when you want to create a template and please remember in your uh, very big uh, cpg client I don't want to take name because it is against uh, this one. They use this inheritance functionality for copying a specification. And they have certain settings here, uh, which is used to set up a link between previous specification, uh, sorry, uh, the existing uh, source specification and the target specification and the document for config setting and to perform this inheritance template i have already uploaded in the uh, sharepoint okay so please refer that and try to this do this activity so this is i am in display mode i'll show you in the change mode also and then we will go here how to select a property tree so here you can see that the property tree you can select so you you are in the process of creating a new template and in that template you define that which property tree which uh, uh which uh, uh vat which value you want to copy from existing so what is the purpose of using the inheritance relationship the main purpose is you need you can avoid your double work when you are working uh, 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 working for uh, to manage a specification so this is this will avoid the, the huge work for a user who is trying to create a new specification but he knows that there is something inheritance template available by using this inheritance template they can decide on what that to be copied what that what uh, particular attribute not to copy what property tree you want to copy what property tree you don't want to copy so you can do the selection and then you can confirm so that once you do the copying you can see that it is copied okay let me show you So we go to here and we go to uh, change mode here and uh, we, oh, sorry. I wanted to go to change mode. That's why I'm trying to perform this. Yeah. So now uh, I went to uh, edit mode of this template, which I have created new. I can define here what kind of uses if uh, uses are allowed to copy this specification suppose a set of users are from usa so they can or they can use this whether this for uh, this particular rating they can use whether this is for internal or official or public you can uh, define here and the validity area category everything you can select here if you want to uh, restrict for something like uh, for a region you can give region and you can give the validity area across the globe if you want to give you can give across the globe so red world is the standard validity area which is used okay uh, 
or if you simply give click here all users then it will consider everything but if you want to define only a particular vanity area people they can use this copy functionality by using this template new then uh, they, you need to define here what region uh, specific user they wanted to do this okay identifier so here is an option of identifier category and identifier type which is allowed allowed for copying so you are copying one spec to another spec so how you are copying you are copying by referring this template and this setting you are doing here first so you are you can still decide by using inheritance template that what to be copied what not to be copied that is how in sap plm we use in this inheritance functionality okay if i simply say yes all identifier it will consider all identifier and then if we click here value assignment type selection you can do the value assignment type selection if you do the uh, uh, the if you want to select the property tree for which property tree only you should copy the value if existing from the source specification to the target specification you can define that they, these all are if you wanted to simply click on this then it will copy all the value assignment types but if you don't want to copy then you can decide from here choose value assignment type if you click here then it will open your system will open this specification type which is grm pro okay you can select that only this should be selected then it will become yellow out of this administration i want to select this one out of composition i want nutrient composition we select this out of this one i want to select for storage uh, loss you select this i want to select for uh, uh, this uh, physical chemical property as a whole i'll select this so it will be selected all of this and then so you want to set up a template in such a way that based on your decision of copying only certain property where you can select like this and you can finalize so that 10 value assignment types have been added to the inheritance template so this template understood that from that property tree there are 10 value assignment types is been configured in such a way that whenever you perform the specification copy functionality it will copy always the 10 value assignment types only okay that is why you do this setting within this uh, inheritance template you can this three are important whether you want to deactivate the inheritance relationship or not whether you want to uh, change to target specification or not if somebody wants to change uh, if you, a case when you have copied from one source specification to target specification and when somebody goes to access that source specification and he makes the changes then what will happen because you have already copied that specification to the different new specification whether changes you want to carry if somebody makes the changes at source specification whether that changes will carry forward to your uh, target specification or not then those kind of thing you can decide here you can do the tick mark here okay these kind of settings you can do i'll not do now here and i have now i have given here the uh, details i have finalized everything and uh, uh, yeah okay new template i have uh, given the name and then i have copied so now you can see that within this template uh, uh we, we are done here 
So now you can see that our new template is visible. So there are still option available. You want to select the materials for copying or not. Please remember reference is not going to work when you are working for the inheritance. Okay. At a time you cannot, you know, uh, in one utensil you cannot prepare two food. It is not possible, two different recipe. Okay. So similarly, inheritance and reference are two different way of copying specification. But in reference, you can, you will not have option to select. Uh, you will not have a uh, choice what to copy, what not to copy. But in inheritance, you have the choice what to copy and what not to copy. And that is how you have seen that we have created a new template. Please be remember important point when you are working in S4 HANA PLM system, a reference is not available in Fury portal. You will not see there. So, Please be remember you have to you have to be careful. This reference is nothing but you are copying a specification by using this reference functionality. And when you go to uh, when you go to uh, this uh, Fury app, you will not find that reference tab. There is no option as per standard SAP. They don't provide this. So you will only have inheritance here. Okay. So here now you can see that we are in relationship, which is nothing but inheritance. We can see that the specification. So the there is a configuration. What you can still set up, what to be copied, what spec type to be copied. I know that uh, we are at 11.4, allow me five minutes, we will close today's session. So this topic was uh, not covered, so I remember, so I am covering now. So this is important topic, please remember. So uh, here you can see that, so you can uh, decide the specification and you can copy. And if this specification, whether you can copy or not copy, this is decided based on the configuration what we have. Where is the configuration? Configuration you will have it from SPRO. You go to you go to Elastic General. You go to Product Life Safety Management. You go to PLM Web User Interface. You go to recipe development. You go to specification. You go to uh, specification master. You go to specification types. And then you select any of the uh, specification. And then you see here reference between specification type. Okay. Whether it is allowed or not. You can see here whether you can certain things are allowed or not. From which source you can copy to this spec. So uh, whether from real group it is allowed or not. So referencing is uh, allowed here. Okay, the configuration is here. So if we are using, let's try for one. So uh, let me try to do one thing. How come nothing is there? Okay. Uh, let me okay. see now earlier uh, before creating a template it was not uh, uh, displaying now we have created a template so you can see that this template has been used see 
now what it is saying provide a valid relationship target specification so they are saying when i am copying a, a, a specification then you cannot copy from pure substance to real substance so uh, we are uh, trying to uh, perform the uh, copying specification activity here okay so this is how uh, you can do it and uh, in order to do that we should know perfectly that what kind of so uh, source specification you wanted to copy okay so so that you can inherit the data from one place to uh, one specification to another specific specification Okay, so there is a uh, configuration uh, which is not aligned to uh, uh, do the copying uh, inheritance uh, from one specification to another specification. If we go to different specification, let me go. And, oh, sorry. To manage specification and uh, we go to Your substance. Sorry. We go to pure substance and we change the specification. Pure substance. And you want it to we have this to a specification called real substance real substance i'm searching real substance and then i use this new template okay so referencing an inheritance relationship is not allowed so config setting we need to check and then uh, we do the uh, uh, copying uh, of specification from source to target so uh, this is important and uh, we need to do the setup here Okay, so uh, what we will do uh, in the uh, next uh, uh, session, uh, by end of uh, the session, once we, uh, we end of next session on Monday for uh, recipe, we are starting recipe. So we, I will show you, I will do the uh, certain config and I will show you how you are copying the uh, specification by using the inheritance template today what we we did we have created an inheritance template please go through the recording and uh, see carefully and try to create your own template and you try to do the uh, copying specification and you do the setup here source okay source was uh, uh, not there uh, listed as a pure substance and before this i was trying to copy a pure substance system says that you cannot do that real substance i it is not here so system says that you cannot do that so if you wanted to make a relationship for copying then you need to do the setup here so that the yeah, system will allow you to copy from pure, pure substance to uh, a real substance or it will allow you uh, to uh, to a certain specification type okay i'll try to show you next uh, next uh, class on monday how we can uh, copy this okay i'll i'll prepare something and but the important is how you can uh, create a 
uh, in a written template. So please go through the recording and try to perform uh, this activity on your own so that you will understand how this inheritance works. Okay. So for today, uh, we have completed module three document management system. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.